so here we are, and I'm just about to try and do the first um, video posting or review. Um, and it's going to be of this book here, um, Everything Ravaged, Everything Burned, by the um, improbably named Wells Tower, who's a, a young New York writer, or at least he looks pretty young from his photo in the back there. Um, and this was a, um, a present I got for Christmas, and, and like a lot of... Um, presents that I get for Christmas, and I really like this, that family have to work quite hard to try and find books they think I won't have had a chance of reading, so I get some really interesting books to read from presents, and this one was one of them, I picked this one up thinking that this was going to be a novel, and in fact it's not, it's a series of short stories. Now, now I like short stories, but I tend to um, veer away from them for the reason that, I, it's maybe a prejudice on my part, that um, I tend to think of short stories as being a form that writers use when they're still learning their craft. And maybe that's unfair of me, because there are obviously some notable exceptions, some excellent short story writers. Um, but um, <coughs> I picked up this, and I thought it was absolutely wonderful, I have to say. Um, there are about eight or nine, nine stories um, in the book. Um, and they tend to focus on um, people who are... Well, victims isn't the right word. More that they're um, going through a bad patch in their lives at the moment. And that is the bit that drives the narrative. They're not victims because these characters don't wallow in their victimhood at all. They're actually quite optimistic stories in many ways. These are people who are going through um, divorces or custody battles or um, whatever it may be, redundancies. But they're going through bad periods, but you know at the end of the day that they're going to come out of those periods as well. So they're actually quite optimistic stories, and you know that the troubles that are caused for these people, and, and in many ways they're very comic because of that, are caused by human beings and our behaviour and our relationships with each other. So they're not tragic in that sense of the word. Um, and as I say, they're really very, very funny. The only story that is perhaps doesn't fit into the collection is in fact the last one after which the, um, the book is named. And that is um, set amongst um, marauding Vikings in the Dark Ages. And it's a great story, but it does seem to be rather uncomfortable within the rest of the collection. It seems to be slightly out on a limb. But the other stories, I think, are great. Set in small town America, great observations, really good dialogue. Um, enjoyed them immensely. Um, and I'll just read a short section from one, just to give you a flavour of um, Wells Tower's writing. And this is a story from a story called Down Through the Valley. And in this story, Ed um, finds himself... I won't give you the whole detail, but he finds himself doing an overnight car journey, driving his young daughter and his ex-wife's current partner back through the night. Um, and there's clearly certain tensions that exist between the two of them. Um, I'll just read you this, because I think it's great. The sky was going dark when Marie bent over in her seat and did a strange thing. She leaned her head down and put her lips on the gear shift. She got the whole thing in her mouth, and it stretched her jaw open all the way. A ribbon of slobber slid down onto the gear boot and twinkled in the green glow of the dashboard. I waited for her to quit, but she didn't. She seemed to have fallen asleep like that. I tapped her on the back. OK, honey, quit it, I said. Barry's head was up in the rear view again, though his face was dark against the lights of the car behind us. It's all right, Ed, Barry said. Jane and I let her do that on long trips. The vibrations relax her. She says it feels good on her teeth. Yeah, well, it's not safe, I said. Come on, sweets. Get off of there. I pulled on Marie's shoulder, but she wouldn't give up the shifter. Didn't even stir. Some kids, you could put them in a bar barrel and roll them down a flight of stairs, and they still wouldn't wake up. Marie's like that. Marie, honey. Barry made like he was going to say something, and then he didn't. And then he did. Ed, if I may, I think you might just let her stay there. Jane says it's fine. There's no harm in it, really. I looked at Marie down there with the gear knob buzzing away in her mouth. A spooky gagging hum was leaking out of her. It was really giving me the larries. I put my hand under Marie's jaw and pried her off the shifter. The thing was, 
her teeth pinched up a little bit of her lip, and when she sat up in the seat she blinked a few times, touched the little spot of blood in the corner of her mouth and started to cry. Yes, see Ed, what I was trying to tell you is if you just let her... Barry, I said. Thanks for putting your spoke in, but I'd appreciate it, whatever you're going to say, you just shut up with it. Hey, come on Ed, you don't have to get hostile with me here, he said. Marie was taking in a long, jagged breath that I knew was going to turn loud when it came back out. I'm not being hostile, Barry. I just don't need to hear from a goddamn committee right now. Marie went into a long, low wail with a lot of lung power behind it. She did a couple of those and then just sat there and whined. Barry let a second pass. Then he said, Is she hurt? No, goddammit, Barry, she's not hurt. I rubbed Marie on her back. Baby doll, you're OK, right? She huffed and sputtered and shook her head. No. Oh, Jesus, yes you are, baby. You're just fine. Barry, she's fine. She's just got a little nick on her lip is all. She's bleeding. Barry, will you please shut up for right now? OK, please? I turned to Marie and wiped a tear from her cheek. Now, honey, how can I dry you up? You hungry? You want a milkshake? You want a goodie? No, she said in about sixteen syllables. Oh, God damn it! yes you do, I said. I was in a mood to break something. I turned on the radio loud and punched the middle of the steering wheel, but gently, so as not to honk the horn. I think that's great.